I'm Benjamin Bratton. Welcome to the first day of the presentations of the terraforming research uh, from the first year of our program. We are obviously joining you online instead of as would be the norm from our campus in Moscow. Uh, allow me to start with a little bit of introduction to the program, uh, to the research uh, agenda of the, of the initiative. To the, speak a bit to the structure of the program before I introduce uh, the first projects for today. Uh, first, the title uh, of the terraforming. The title refers to two, two terraformings. First, uh, the terraforming that has taken place uh, in recent centuries in the form of urbanization and, and so forth. Uh, the terraforming that has brought us to this moment and also to the terraforming uh, that now must be planned and uh, conducted for the coming decades as a, as a planetary design initiative um, for the next centuries. We'll explain a bit more what that entails. The term terraforming, quote unquote, usually refers obviously to the terraforming of ecosystems of other planets and moons and so forth to make them capable of supporting Earth-like life. But the looming ecological consequences uh, of what is colloquially called the Anthropocene, suggests that in the decades to come, uh, we will need to terraform Earth if it is to remain a viable host for Earth-like life. And our programs, uh, in many ways, seeks to uh, explore the terms uh, and problematics of that uh, proposition. Uh, the book, The Terraforming, uh, which I have a, a copy of here, um, and which is available in an electronic download, I believe, from the, the link below, um, and as it is also as an EPUB electronic download from the terraforming.strelka.com website. I invite you to, to go through this. It will establish, it will sort of lay out the, the argument for the program in much greater detail than I can do so here today. Um, but it serves in a way as a kind of opening brief, as said, uh, for both the, the critical philosophy uh, that is required and the critical design that is required uh, in turn to confront the uh, predicaments I've just described. Uh, a few of the key terms that you're going to hear um, several times over the next couple of days will re re require an advance some definition and explication. Uh, first is planetarity or the planetary. Planetarity, as we, we have it, come, is something that has come into focus over previous uh, recent decades through the uh, astronomic uh, vision and representation of, the, of, of Earth through orbiting imaging, uh, terrestrial modeling media, satellite sensors and servers uh, working in sync, um, so to speak that have, among other things, also made it possible to, uh, to measure climate change uh, with any degree of, of mathematical confidence. Um, and one implication of this um, is that when we speak of the, uh, the ramifications of planetary scale computation and uh, sensing media for climate change mitigation, we must sort of first recognize that the very idea of climate change, quote unquote, the concept of climate change is itself an epistemological accomplishment um, of planetary scale computation and that mechanism in itself, however um, ironic that, uh, that that may in fact be. Uh, a second key term, which you'll, you'll hear um, invoked in, in various ways, is that of the Copernican term. Uh, the kind of, uh, and, and how the technologically mediated shift away from anthropocentric perspectives uh, is crucial in both theory and practice. And the Copernican term means not only a shift from geocentric to heliocentric perspectives, but um, the, the, the traumatic decentering um, of the intuitive anthropocentric uh, presumptions more generally. Um, in, in fact, to be explicit, we would define the Copernican term this way. It is, it, the Copernican term is a process by which an intuitive or anthropocentric conceptual model of the world and how the world works is able to produce a technology uh, to work upon that world according to the logic of the model. But when that technology is properly used, it produces information about the world. It reveals that the world, in fact, 
works in ways that are quite different than the model that brought about this technology. And so a rupture occurs, and a certain kind of synthesis is demanded between the implications of this uh, technical revelation uh, and the model that brought about the technology that brought about the revelation. And we think this is, in some ways, um, what makes our current moment uh, particularly terrifying, uh, in that we have accomplished several of these technical revelations um, without the synthesis. Um, and we know, however, that that undermining of the models that are brought forth, um, that technicity are yet to come. They're still before us. We have not passed through them yet. Now, in the context of the terraforming, um, as we'll, we will talk more in much more detail in the book, um, this, the Copernican turn is, is, is a, while it is a kind of trauma and a decentering, uh, as, as, as it suggested, it is in fact one that uh, demands more agency uh, from us as a species uh, to in the composition of that terraforming process, not less. And there's several reasons for that. Now, third, however, um, of a sort of key terms for us to start with is, is that the implications for this shift implied for urban planetary, urban design, um, are, 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 are central to, the, to uh, how this plays out. Instead of relying upon or reviving um, ideas of nature uh, as a kind of foundation by which we might push against, we would reclaim and revalorize the artificial. Uh, and here understood not as in fake, uh, but rather the connotation of having been designed. Uh, the artificial as a foundation um, for which links the, that would link the mitigation of anthrop anthropogenic climate change uh, to the geopolitics of automation. Indeed, we would argue that, uh, that the circumstance of anthropogenic climate change demands an equally anthropogenic response. And that the sooner that we allow for that, uh, the better. So what kind of urbanism do we propose? Um, it is an urbanism that is uh, pro-planning, pro-artificial, anti-collapse, pro-universalist in the, in the sense of an emergent and inclusive condition defined by the shared physical limits of the planet, uh, a deep parochialized, deep provincialized universal. It is anti-anti-totality, pro-materialist, anti-anti-leviathan, anti-mythology and pro-egalitarian distribution. The questions of geotechnology, geoeconomics, uh, geonomos, geoecology, uh, are situated in that point between how the world appears to us and how we appear to the world, how it and how it gazes back at us through the technologies that we've made to see it. The research program is prefigurative, speculative in a, in a specific sense. Um, we are trying to ask and use the tools of design representation and theoretical explication and indeed uh, prose and text to ask foundational questions. Um, but the prefigurative is more in the mode of simulation than of symbolic performance. Our goal is to towards the contribution of a viable plan, um, but also the refusal of bad plans as necessary. Uh, and just a bit of a, a, a cautionary tale, in, in a sense, some of the semantics and protocols and formats of the planetarity to come, as we uh, imagine it, may come uh, from our most uh, angelic efforts and inspirations, and some may come from darker places. And that, within the context of our research, is allowed for. So fair warning on that. Let me talk very quickly about the, the program itself, the, the kind of architecture of the, of the, of the think tank. Um, the terraforming is we've just completed the first of a three-year plan, three-year research cycle um, with three uh, different annual uh, cohorts joining us in Moscow normally. Um, at the Strelka Institute campus uh, for a five-month intensive uh, curriculum that runs February through the end of June uh, with the faculty that come uh, rotate, rotate through. Uh, and we develop these original research projects in, in, in collab collaboration. Um, 
the program is based in Moscow, um, and it, indeed the sort of vast and um, uh, it, the vast expanse of Russian territory that is our site condition. Um, and it's from that particular perch um, that we uh, look up, as you'll see, uh, out into space um, uh, and from space back down to Earth in order to orient uh, or, or disorient, as the case may be, uh, what the planetary and planetarity should mean. Uh, let me at, at this moment then say a, a word of thanks, uh, sincere thanks to the uh, and acknowledgement to the the Strelka team, the terraforming team in particular, uh, w w the my collaborators, all of our collaborators on on this uh, on this uh, program, uh, to Olga, Nikolai, Visa, Vlad, Elena. Um, and to Vavara, uh, or the Stroka CEO, um, the rest of the Stroka teams, um, the design team, events team, uh, and uh, all of those who are part of this really extraordinary, extraordinary institute, uh, which I'm very proud to, uh, to, to be part of as well. Uh, I mentioned the faculty that have come um, through the program. Um, I'll, I'll just sort of quickly go through those who are, who are interested. I, I happen to think that we've assembled uh, the most interesting design faculty of any program anywhere, uh, quite quite clearly and uh, quite quite literally. Um, those those faculty include Helen Hester, UC Parica, Kim Stanley Robinson, Lisa Masseri, all four of whom you will hear from in keynote addresses over the next couple of days. Um, Nick Cernchek, Shin Liu, Meta Haven, Design Earth, Liam Young. Uh, Robert Pytrushko, Holly Herndon, Matt Dryhurst, Jeff Mena, Holly Jean Buck, uh, Angelina Davidova, Sofia uh, Gavri uh, Gavrilova, Dennis Lientov, um, and, and many others along the way who have joined us, uh, who have joined us both in person and, and, and remotely. Um, it's an extraordinary group of people, of minds, and we're grateful for their um, participation in our in our initiative here. Um, as given the, the pandemic circumstances in which we find ourselves, obviously the first year the program didn't go, uh, the, the, the sequence and the, the plot line didn't develop quite as we in, intended. But the, uh, I, I think the extraordinary quality of the work that you will see over the next couple of days is, is due um, primarily to the, um, the rigor and commitment and tenacity of our researchers um, who have uh, developed it under less than ideal circumstances, but I think have done a really extraordinary job. Um, for those who wish to follow up a little bit deeper, again, in the, in the, in the links below, um, you'll find a PDF to the program book for today, which will give some summaries of the, of the projects uh, that we'll be presenting uh, over, the, over today and tomorrow. Um, the email, uh, apply to stro at stroka.com, which is our, uh, our all-purpose contact list for those who would like to add their names to the mailing list or are interested in applying to the program next year we will, for the next second and third years. Our, our admissions will be open later this year. Um, the terraforming.strelka.com is the URL that you need to follow all the goings on within the program. Uh, you'll find a link to the, once more, the terraforming book, um, sort of design brief for the program, an EPUB version of that, which you're able to download below, um, as well as a link to the lectures that I gave as a seminar uh, in the first week of, of the program, um, several hours by which we go through the, the entire book. Uh, page by page. So if you're interested in a deeper dive into the, the ideas and conversations that have animated the work that you'll see over the next couple of days, um, there's plenty for there, plenty there for you to, to consider. Now, uh, in terms of what you'll see now, uh, we have nine projects uh, and four presentations from remote researchers. The design projects were done in groups of three, um, which we structured as kind of uh, miniature model design practices. Um, our researchers come from a wide diversity of disciplinary positions. Um, half of them roughly are, have some background within architecture and urbanism. Um, half come from other, other areas of design, uh, interaction design, philosophy, filmmaking, um, you know, economics, mathematics, uh, quite the whole, the whole kind of spectrum. And so the, 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 the model design practices themselves are deeply interdisciplinary by, um, by design. Half of them are, are Russian, half of them are international. Um, and also, I should say, the, um, as ever, our program has no tuition. Uh, it's, available to, um, it's available to those who um, we, we feel would be able to uh, benefit the program the most and who would benefit from the program 
the most. And so if you're considering for the next couple of years, um, please keep that in mind. Um, last point, once again, to reiterate the program, the work is, is trained on, on Russia itself, its own obvious complexities and trials um, and the opportunities posed by this um, complex and amazing place. So um, over the next few days, you will see some of our contributions to that, uh, that, that plan that I've described. Uh, quick words on those who know, know some of the work we do with the, with the New Normal program. Um, the work with the terraforming, the kind of project structure that you'll see from the terraforming program, we decided we wanted to do something that was, that was more research driven. Uh, and you'll see how the, the research is, takes a, a much more prominent place in, the, in, the, uh, in both the foundation and proposition of the work. Um, each of the projects demands, as we say, sort of multiple literacies. There are projects that would suggest uh, uh, some familiarity with uh, architecture and urbanism, uh, earth science, economics, continental philosophy, um, in, in, and so forth in, in various ratios. And it, it's really in the, uh, the kind of uh, staging and orientation of these multiple literacies that we hope to uh, not just address an audience, but indeed to kind of conjure an audience um, that, would, um, uh, that, would be, that would enter into these discussions on the terms that, we are, um, that we've established. The design that you'll see um, may seem a bit uh, uh, unfamiliar. It's also by design. In some cases, it's not for the not for the faint of heart, um, uh, but is more of an acquired is more of an acquired taste. Um, but that that um, that challenge uh, that is that is uh, intrinsic in that is we think well, well worth the payoff. So get comfortable. Uh, we have plenty of, of, of work to share with you over the next, over the next uh, two, the next two days. Um, and, and yet still, um, it really, to us really feels like just a summary of the, of the conversations that we've been able to develop over the time. So today, um, the, we, the, our, our program, uh, as you, as you see, uh, we'll, we'll, we will first from the project, bury the sky, which I'll introduce in a moment. We'll then do the project cosmos law, uh, we will hear from then one of our remote researchers, Luke Jones, um, our first keynote from Lisa Masseri, uh, backcasting Kardashev 1, Pharmacon Landscape, we'll then uh, another remote researcher, Rachel Hill, the Project Green Military New Deal, and finally, keynote from Kim Stanley Robinson at the end of the day.